Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports for today's URC Round 16 preview and it is getting very, very tense in the URC. We are two rounds away um, from knowing after this who will be the top eight teams that will take part in the Champions Cup, assuming that the Sharks don't grab an extra spot. If they were to win the Challenge Cup, then they take a spot um, in that top eight. So whoever finishes eighth will actually drop out into the Challenge Cup and uh, the Sharks will take that their Champions Cup spot away from them but for playoffs top eight sides and that is what matters and so many big games with regards to the top eight this weekend and before we go through them and look at some of the South African lineups that have been named please do smash the like on the video please do subscribe to the channel as well it all starts at tonight's two games first of all it is the 50th place dragons hosting the stormers who are currently in fifth a win would put them a little bit of distance into that uh, that playoffs and probably need about another two wins from here. So they get the next two wins. They can probably afford to lose that last game against the Lions and still uh, get into that top eight. Um, so if you look at the, the side the Stormers have named, well, they're very much taking things very seriously. That is how they do line up and uh, very strong side. They're selling right, will capture the side in that second row. The front row of Cesar Tolle, Joseph Dweb, and France Mohair will pack a big punch. Uh, Ruben van Heeren, Salomon Ruart, uh, Billy Engelbrecht, Ben J. Dixon, Evan Ruiz. It's a very good pack. Um, and then some nice big names in the back line. The Hirsch Yankees will partner Mario Nibok. No Damian Billimser, though, uh, for the Stormers this weekend. Dan Duplessis will Will partner. One to see the Similani, Sleeman Hartsenberg, Warwick Hallant, topping that side out. And off the bench, Andre Hugo Fenter, Brock Harris, Netflix Bashir, RJ Smith, Hachiba Daanami, um, Stefan Angara, John Duke Duplessis, and the return of Sasha Feinberg and Gomezulu from injury. So it's a good side. Nice 5 3 split there. I expect them to have. Uh, enough to beat a pretty poor dragon side but dragons are at home uh fun fact uh the stormers center chris hollis who is over at dragons will be getting his first ever appearance and start tonight up against his former side which will be interesting the other match tonight we'll see edinburgh host zebra edinburgh currently sitting in ninth place a win could put them into that top eight obviously with other results still to come and you don't expect them to really struggle against zebra especially given the fact uh, that Edinburgh are playing at home. Zebra have proved to be tricky at home. They have not travelled particularly well at this tournament. Uh, tomorrow we'll see the Bulls host the Glasgow Warriors in a massive top four clash. And the Bulls, much like the Stormers, not taking any chances. Uh, if you look at the side they have named, it is pretty much as strong as they get. A um, bit of an area with the, with the team list. They're not quite sure what's happened there. But in the front row, it is Kheros Dinekamp, Alka van der and Volko Lowe um, packing down and providing a lot of... Uh, of, of impact there. You then got Ruin for Mark, Ruin or Kier in the second row, Ruin or Kier um, kept back and capping the side. Ruin for Mark um, has actually signed a new contract extension at the Bulls. So, uh, you know, very much seeing the value he brings. Uh, the Loose Chua says, uh, uh, sees Mark of Astarden, Alvaro Glow, and Cameron Harnacombe. Mark of Astarden also recently signing a new uh, contract extension. Uh, arguably their best Loose Chua and Peter Gamedi uh, not involved this weekend. Um, but yeah, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. In both appear, Will partner Chris Smith, no Johan Kursen, um, but then a back line of Kurt Lawrence, Harold Forster, David Creel, uh, Vili Leroux is uh, going to be very exciting. Then off the bench, it is Jan Kovalos, and Pio Matanzema, Francois Kropa, Renard Ludwig, Nizam Kar, Zach Berger, Jakob van der Valt, and Devin Williams. So plenty of X factor in that off that bench, plenty of good, solid players in that starting line as well. Uh, Scarlet will then host Elster. Um, and Ulster currently in seventh place, so a lot of teams will be looking to Scarlets to try and do them a favour with regards to how this top eight, eight race might uh, play out. They almost did a job against the Sharks last weekend, and I think they could potentially do a job against Ulster this weekend as well. So they prove that they're a tough uh, team to go and, and beat over in, uh, in Wales. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see what happens there. The Sharks could potentially do the likes of the Lions a potential favour if they were to beat Benton. They've also gone very, very strong. I'm um, looking to try and build momentum as they get ready for that final, um, literal final, the Challenge Cup final in a couple of weeks' time. So in the front row, it is Oxen Chair, Bongi Manambi, Vincent Koch, uh, backed up by Evan Smith and the youngster Corner Roll. So four uh, World Cup winners in that tight five. Then James Fenter, Parnas Cabrant, Cobbler, Avengers Tuka, who swaps the number seven for the number eight jersey over there. Grant Williams will continue his partnership with the incredibly on form Sia Masuku. Then a back line that is stacked with international talent. Marcus Wilma Pimpi, Francois Fenton, Lacanya Am, Werner Koch, Apelele Fassi. Fun fact, if you look at 9 through to 15, only Masia Masuku has not represented South Africa in some form 
of rugby. Um, Brenner Cock, obviously a blitz block. Everybody else there does have a spring block cap. So a very stacked uh, back line there. Off the bench, it is Fez and Barty. Into two cooks, Luno and Henry Jakobs in the front row. Lapis Lavaskakni, Tino Mabazera uh, will provide forward cover. Cameron Wright, Buddha Chamberlain. And then a first potential appearance for Diego Polis. The very exciting outside center who made a move to the Sharks, but hasn't had found game time particularly easy to come by. And uh, so an opportunity for him to sort of show his worth. Uh, after that game, we move to uh, some very, very big clashes. Yeah, Munster versus Connacht. A third versus sixth clash. Probably the biggest clash of the weekend, arguably, aside from the Bulls. Glasgow Warriors clash, but uh, Munster beating Connacht could mean Connacht will really be in the fight for the top eight. As a Lions fan, very much hoping that Munster can get the business done. It is at Thorman Park. They are trying to, to uh, push to try and make sure they've got at least a home quarterfinal, but really pushing to see if they can get themselves a home semi final as well. And even maybe a home final if the right results go their way. And uh, after that, uh, we'll travel down to South Africa Alliance hosting Cardiff, a 12th place Cardiff. Alliance currently 11th. There is quite a bit of points between them, so it's maybe not as close as it might suggest, but a, a must win game for the Lions, and uh, they're very much treating it like that with the team that they've put out. They've effectively got three playoff games. The Lions win the next three games. I think they get into that top eight. Uh, so in the front row, it's Ruan Dre, PJ Boerta, Asnate, and Klaber Kanye. A very solid scrummaging front row, especially with the Klaber Kanye starting. Ruan Dre, Springbok capped, uh, brings a lot of experience there. Willem Alberts, Ruan Dalput in the second row. Uh, JC Vittorius, Ruan Fenter, Franco Horn, a nice dynamic loose chair. Manuel Stuka will add a bit of uh, X Factor off the bench. You've then got uh, Morty Funnenberg, Parnix, and the Humber showing the attacking tent that the Lions want to bring this weekend. Edel Funnenberg, Richard Creel, Q and Horn. Uh, the back three, Horn returning to the lineup to make his 50th appearance for the Lions in the centers. Marius Lowe next to the ever improving Eric Cornier, who's been very impressive since the injury to Henkel van Vake. Off the bench, it will be Jakob Asaki, JP Smith, and Conrad van Furen. Brand North Mark will manage to Henry Sergil will add a bit of impact as well in a 6 2 split, which then features Jordan Hendrickson and Gianni Lombard as the backline options. Uh, finally, Leinster versus Ospreys. Um, Leinster have basically indicated they will go pretty um, strong for the majority of the remainder of their games, given the fact that they want to get that first place back. And um, Osprey is currently also in that fight for, for top eight, but a win, uh, well, a loss rather, would, would pretty much take them out of it. So if we look at the table, this is the important thing. Glasgow Warriors sitting at the top. Bulls were to win. They could go above Leinster and even to two points clear with a bonus point win. Leinster to play, however. Leinster with the beat um, Ospreys. They could go back to the top of the table, which is exactly what they want to do. Um, if you look at that top eight race there, a lot for Stormers, for example. Well, I mean, they can't basically drop. They can actually drop out of the, the, the top eight with the right results. But a win for them, for example, would put them very much into that, uh, that top eight conversation. A loss for the likes of the Ospreys or Lions could pretty much take them out of it, to be honest. Lions, a bonus point win, could put them level with Ulster, Benton, as well as Connacht if all three of those were to lose their games. However, they will be behind based on number of matches won. Um, but I do expect to see the likes of Connacht, Ulster, Benton drop points in the next couple of weeks. So this is a dogfight, really, between uh, all these various teams. Storm is sitting pretty the most with regards to the fact that they are the most clear in that top eight. But even them, only two points clear of Edinburgh. Um, Lions really need to put themselves back in that mix. They can do that this weekend with the right results, but they'll need to pitch up, get a bonus point victory, put them on 44 points, and then hope that they can try and uh, um, go unbeaten, really. Because, uh, for example, they if the Stormers were to lose tonight for whatever reason, the Lions could actually have an opportunity of overtaking the Stormers, given the fact that those two teams play each other. But uh, let me know what your thoughts are of the weekend ahead, as well as your score predictions down in the comments below. Please do smash a like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.